Welcome to today's video where we will explore a key difference between Affinity Photo and Photoshop. One feature Photoshop has, and Affinity not, is the ability to disable RGB channels in the blend options. In Photoshop you can double click on a layer to open up the blending options. In the advanced blending section we now have the options to turn on and off the RGB channels separately. By default, all channels are enabled or turned on. Let's disable the red channel and see what happens to our test image. As you might have expected, all the red values have disappeared from the current layer and are no longer shown. But here is where things get tricky and probably not a lot of people really understand how this function exactly works. Let me close this dialog. As you see, I have a fill layer below my test image. Let me change the color from black to mid gray. Notice what happens. The reds have returned. Initially, this does not make sense as we turned off the red channel from our test layer. Well, actually, the checkbox we turned off in the blending option doesn't mean hide the values. It actually means do not use the channel value from this layer but from the layers below. As we increase the red value from 0 to 128 in the fill layer below, the reds are now shown in our test layer with a value of 128. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to the blending options and turn back on the red channel. If I now move with the color sampler, notice how the red value changes. Now let's turn the red off again and do the same with the color sampler. Notice how the red value stays at 128 no matter where I move. I will put a color sampler and see what happens when we change the background color. The red value in the test layer follows the red value of our fill. Pretty interesting. Usually this can be applied to create double color exposure effects. For example, here I have two images stacked on top of each other. Let's disable the red channel in the blending options of the top layer and see the result. Pretty cool. Now that we know how this RGB blending works, let's switch to Affinity Photo and apply the same. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, Affinity does not have the same functionality built in. Initially, you might think that the blend range on red will control this. Let me show you what I mean. When I open up the blend options and choose red in the source layer range and flatten the curve, everything disappears. Which makes sense as we specify to hide all pixels which have an R value ranging from 0 to 255. Or, in other words, all the existing pixels, as every pixel has an R value between 0 and 255. The blend range option does not allow you to completely filter out only the red. It can be used to dim down the effect of red, but it can never be used to match the same effect as turning off red in Photoshop. However, removing red is quite simple and there are many ways to do it. A possible solution would be to add a curves adjustment, select the red channel and flatten the red curve. Pretty easy. Another option I like to do is to apply a procedural texture filter to a layer and then set the R to 0. Pretty easy. The next step is to use the red channel from the layer below to use as red for this layer. Currently I have a black layer below. I'm going to make a linked duplicate first and then apply a procedural texture to the duplicate where I filter out only the red by setting the other channels to zero. If I now change the blend mode of our test image without the red channel to the add blend mode, we probably will get what we want as we are only adding the red from the layer below to the end result. Now let me change the color of the fill layer. Even though this works, the whole area is filled with red. 
This is a situation that is happening because the test image I'm using is transparent. The rectangle below, where the filter is applied, is covering the original grey fill. To fix that, I need to add a mask to the fill with the red. I can command or control click on the test layer, which creates a selection of the visible pixels, and while the selection is being shown, I can press mask on the fill rectangle below. With command or control D, we can hide the selection. Now we have duplicated the behavior from Photoshop. I can change the fill color and the red in our test image will follow the red value from the fill. Pretty cool. Keep in mind that the trick with the mask is not necessary if you don't have a transparent image. Let's apply this technique to the same images that we used in Photoshop. Here I have my two layers. Let me duplicate the bottom layer first and apply the procedural texture where I will hide the green and the blue. On the top layer I will use the procedural texture again to hide the red and when I change the blend mode to add we get the exact same cool double color exposure effect. If you're planning to use this effect more frequently you can make a macro for it. I already have a macro for this and let's undo the steps I did earlier and apply my macro. Pretty awesome. There you go. Now you know how to emulate the RGB blend options of Photoshop in Affinity Photo. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed the content, please show your support by hitting the like button. If you're passionate about photo and video manipulation tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for joining and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.